Seven years ago, we had this idea of creating an economic development tool that would change the future of Buffalo. And uh, when we tried to get people to come here, they laughed at us. But what they don't understand is our passion, our love, and our belief in this great city. Take one, Mark. Hi, I'm Colleen Heidinger, president of 43 North. 43 North is the latitude line of Buffalo. So it's 43 by 79, so we took 43 North to name us. We are an accelerator program based in Buffalo, New York, fueled by our $5 million startup competition. The mission of 43 North is to attract and retain startups in Western New York, period. And that's what we do every day, all day. No matter if it's through social media, events, getting on planes and meeting people, it's attracting applications and then retaining companies that we invest in right here in Western New York. This year we're recruiting for year seven. Hey Kevin, it's Colleen. Hey, how's it going? Good. So tell me, how do we do? Uh, yeah, give me a sec here. Um, so, all right, we had about 21 countries that applications came from. And also, locally, we had almost 50 companies apply as well, which I think, you know, it was great to see also. That's yeah. really great to hear. Yeah, one of the other things I thought was cool is a lot of the companies already had existing investment. So, you know, Sequoia, Backstage, Hustle Fund, Mark Cuban. Uh, Beyonce's fund was an investor in one of them. Okay. Tell me, what are next steps? So is there anything that you need from me? And also... Uh... I think for a long time, Buffalonians were let down. We went through a lot as a community, and we never seemed to win. But the startup ecosystem in Western New York has provided pretty consistent wins, and some bigger than others. And we're finally starting to see some of these sparks turn into flames. So. Every year, we have more of a story to tell. You know, all I do is create. My mind's always working and building on things. And my imagination of what things could be. I'm not a developer, I'm a creator. And when I first came to Buffalo, I saw a building, which is Seneca One tallest building in Buffalo. You can see it from anywhere around. And I looked at the building and it kind of sucked me in. And I went back to Washington and I just couldn't shake it. And everybody in the company say, what the hell are you gonna do in Buffalo? And the more negative remarks I got about Buffalo, the more it challenged me. Interesting, they, they chose the baseball stadium side view. Yeah. You, you know, not the water view. Wendell. 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 Interesting. When I got here, they said, oh, nothing's gonna happen. Oh, he's not gonna buy the building when we put it under contract. Oh, he's not gonna close. I felt that Buffalo was its own worst enemy at the time. And it really pissed me off because I saw the potential. And lo and behold, we started on the inside out and the outside in, and we're putting it back together again. And there's always going to be obstacles. You can't stop. Because when one good thing happens, another good thing happens next to it. Then another good thing happens next to it. So. What we're doing and what 43 North is doing and everybody that has the love and a passion for the city, really what we're doing is we're doing this for the next generation. I'm obviously a young man. I probably have another 50 years left in me, but everything that you're doing right now, you're doing to play it forward. So 
I think you can close your eyes as far as what the city is going to look like and make it anything you want it to be. You just have to keep on going. It's Nick, take one. Mark. My name is Nick Kaczynski. I work with Odoo, and I'm the director of US East. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I do is go for a jog to Delaware Park. I imagine myself there 100 years ago. How did this city come to be? What was the industry? What was the mentality of a Buffalonian 100 years ago? It was a mentality of progress and innovation. It was a mentality of risk taking. It was being industrious and building for the future. And I feel like over the last you know, 100 years, we've let that mentality slip a bit. We've grown too comfortable in the sense that we can depend on industry giants like steel or manufacturing, right? From the 70s up until now, it's been a pretty scarce town. But for the first time in, you know, 100 plus years, I see a group of people banding together and creating that mentality again. The 43 North competition is very much the heart of the business community in Buffalo. It's finding and it's kickstarting the types of companies that we want to bring to this community. And it's setting them loose. We're prioritizing innovation and growth over security. Companies are being started that may never work out, but people are still passionate and still moving forward because we know that if they accomplish what they set out to do, that the benefits are astronomical, not just for a small group of people, but for the community at large. Hundreds of jobs get created. People get invigorated and they get right excited and they go out and try to do the same thing. That's how you change a culture. That's how you change a mentality. And it's starting now and it will go. My kids, my grandkids, all of them are going to ride the waves that are being created today. Let's go over this investor packet then, because we need to get this ready for tonight. All right, so Flox is ready? Yeah. OK, great. Uh, what about their Buffalo plan? Have we been talking about Buffalo plan? Yeah, he's moving from London. So do you want to take Flox and move them to the right? They're good to go. So uh, who's next? Kilter. Uh, Kilter? So we are getting our packets ready for the investment committee. So we had hundreds of applications. We then narrowed that down to about 120 who pitched us, and we gathered all those pitches, all that feedback. We assembled it into our due diligence packets that we are giving the investment committee. There's about 50 companies in here. And so the investment committee is going to meet next week, and they are going to select the up to 20 companies that will be coming to Buffalo for this year's finals. Let's get... Laundress. Yeah. Yep. One of our strongest and biggest pillars is that investment in Buffalo. That's definitely something that we look for specifically here that a typical, you know, 
VC firm wouldn't look for. So we need to see like your Buffalo plan. How are you going to spend this investment in Buffalo? How many people are you going to hire here? Are you going to look for a house here? Like, how are you going to lay down roots for yourself and your company in Buffalo? I mean, some of these companies are just, they're going to be so successful and they're going to do that here and they're going to be successful here and because of us. And that just makes me so excited because I just know we're going to make a change and we're going to make a difference here. So this is Buffalo Prep. This is an extracurricular program for minority students to help them advance in the community. Um, and this is really where I learned to work hard. A lot of weekends and nights, really where I learned a real sense of community and that people in Buffalo care. They care about growing the youth, they care about the future, and I'm just excited to continue to give back to them. Monique, interview take one. Mark? I'm Monique Cooper, and I'm the Chief of Staff at High Operator. Growing up, especially on the east side of Buffalo, the opportunities that people try to convince you that are available to you, especially when I was growing up, were so limited back then in terms of skill set or even your ability to be an entrepreneur. It was kind of like, go to high school, get a job, you would work in the healthcare industry, you might work at General Mills, you might work at one of the banks. And so the conversation at that time was, if you really want to grow and really want to be someone who's a change maker, you might have to leave this region in order to find the opportunities you're looking for. So I actually joined the United States Air Force. I went off to Texas as an operations intelligence analyst, and that was really my boot camp and honestly my college experience. And while I loved it and it was really exciting and invigorating, it really reminded me how much I actually do love the city of Buffalo and how much it meant to me. I couldn't find the pizza that I love to eat in Texas. I couldn't find the chicken wings. Everyone ate ranch and not blue cheese. There was no Bill's Mafia. There was none of the things um, that I had grown up with. And most importantly, the feeling of being in a good sized city, but still feeling like it's a small community. So coming home was super exciting. And I started noticing in my job search and things like that, that I was finding tech startups. And when I was graduating high school, it was like, what's a startup? A startup is, you know, something you see on television, but it wasn't something that was a feasible job here. And I'd never envisioned myself as a person working in startups, as a woman, as a veteran, as a person of color. I'd never seen myself in those communities, and I never felt like anyone mirrored that back to me. So now the ability for me to talk to people about that and open the eyes of the kids at Buffalo Prep about what's available for them here has just been so rewarding. But I just wanted to talk to you a little bit today about my journey in Buffalo, being a graduate of Prep, and then also getting involved in the startup community. I think if you even have a kernel of an idea that maybe this is something that I could do, or maybe this is something that I could even be interested in or love, I think you owe it to yourself to Try to invest in yourself in that way. Buffalo is dying for you guys to be leaders, for you to step into your zone and really make it happen. And you guys are the perfect people to continue to grow the community in Buffalo and make it so You behind. may not come from the place they expect you to come from, but that has nothing to do with what you can contribute to the community and what you can accomplish.
We're at the headquarters of 43 North, right down here in the hardest city of Buffalo. And today we're going to take 19 finalists who have been invited to Buffalo from all over the world. They're going to pitch their hearts out to 30 VCs uh, from around the country. And those VCs are going to meet and figure out who the finalists are, the final 10 that will be pitching tomorrow at Shays uh, Theater here in Buffalo for a chance to win a million bucks. And this is a completely unscripted event. So they go out there, they got to make a pitch and then field a bunch of questions from some really successful people. I think they're nervous, you know, but I think, you know, I think they're ready. Today is the big day. The preliminary round is really where the teams start to understand the format of the competition, how it works. They start making small tweaks to their presentation. And that's what's so interesting about this competition. Just getting to the stage is going to be really exciting and really exhilarating for these teams. But once they're there, they have to win. So it's still a process. It's still nerve wracking. And even when you're super successful, there's something daunting coming around the corner that you have to be ready for. I think that there's some great teams here, so I mean that's always very um, you know scary. But yeah, I'm feeling good. I feel like I'm gonna go bungee jumping. <laughs> they're they're miking me up, but you know it's the same as getting your ankles tied and jumping off a cliff, right? What's the difference? I'm feeling very excited. I'm talking about super excited. We got our buffalo gear on, <laughs> buffalo ready. Feel like a buffalo. Feel like I want to knock some down. Welcome to the semifinals and qualifying round of 7th edition of 43 North. Today you're going to see 19 finalists from across the globe pitch live on this stage. I'm going to bring out our first company from Kilter. Please welcome Seth Reddick to the stage. Kilter is a B2B SaaS platform for charities and brands to turn their supporters' everyday activities into opportunities to raise money for their favorite causes. Laundress has built a physical to digital transformational platform. This is a game changer for the hospitality industry. 40% of salon and barbershop space goes unused every day. Think of us as Airbnb. We're Flox, the healthy chicken company. We sit inside chicken houses and we improve the health of the birds. We need supply chain software that focuses on local. That's Big Wheelbarrow. In a world of information overload and behavior altering technology, we make crackers and roasted seeds. Brad Zellett teaches you how to play guitar, bass, or ukulele, and it's fun, easy, and addictive. At scale, do you continue to plan to increase the pricing? Can you elaborate on your go-to-market strategy? What processes, practices are we expecting the farmer to change? How's the awareness? So tell me about your IP. Do you have IP? Could you help us understand the bottom of market opportunity? You don't have a lot of money left in the bank. If you do not win this competition, what are you going to do? I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, as you know, this is a very, very important initiative for Buffalo, New York, and your support means a great deal for us. So thank you, have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Our judges who have watched all the pitches today, 30 venture capitalists from around the nation, are going to head upstairs to M&T's Tech Academy to determine the top 10. They have quite lengthy conversations as to which companies are the best fits for Buffalo at the end of the day. and so. Nine will not proceed, and the top 10 will then proceed tomorrow night to Shays, where they'll pitch in front of 3,000 people. Is oh, yeah. okay. Sound is rolling. Yep. We're ready. Rolling. I am Mike Whistler. I'm the Chief Information Officer for M&T Bank. I was lucky enough to spend most of my adult life at a very large financial institution that happened to be leading the country across a bunch of industries. I had a couple voices in my head, maybe, like, am I really challenging myself the way that I ask everyone around me to be challenged? Uh, am I really putting you know, my experiences and what I have to offer to its best and highest purpose? You know, they were certainly rolling around a little bit. So the phone rings. Most of the time, I never pick it up. That day, I picked it up, and it was typical recruiter, we've got a great opportunity. And then you hear the words, but it's in Buffalo. Buffalo creates this image of this snowbound tundra. You know, some 1990s football game where you can't even see the players because there's so much snow packed up. So I'm like, thanks, but no thanks. And I politely hung up the phone. 
I'm really glad that they persisted. Uh, it turns out that picking up the phone that day turned out to be the beginnings of one of the best decisions that I ever made. Because I had forgotten what it was like to be part of a community that people actually gave a shit about. I have never been to a place in all of my travels, I've never been in a place that's been so excited about the potential that we have. When you're buzzing through downtown as I do, the infrastructure that we have and the architecture that has lived through uh, that last hundred years is just gorgeous. You see a lot of history, and I also think you see a lot of promise. We're making a lot of investments. You're seeing lots of other folks moving downtown, residing in downtown. The energy level is coming up. We're trying to create that place where you can live, eat, play, collaborate, educate, calibrate together. It only takes you a little bit of time to be in the presence of Buffalo, to understand that this place is positively different. This is a place where you can be part of something bigger, a place where you want to take your experiences and your skills and give it a chance. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be a designer. You don't have to be a data scientist. This is a place for everybody. the bigger one. Yeah. What feels like home for me is what brings peace, where I feel my most authentic. I am Sandra Hamlet. I'm an account executive at Kickfurther. So what do you want with the guacamole? Because I can make some tortillas if you want. I grew up in New York City, um, lived there for most of my life, and then found myself looking for something a little different, and Buffalo just seemed to be the place. Have you met Marco here, his um, family? Mm -hmm. no. they have, um... I really love the Larkin area. The first ward is what it's called. There used to be factories and old manufacturing plants, and now it's just this vibrant, you know, place. You see people a couple of times and it's like, hey, how you doing? And it's, let's stop and chat. It's just super friendly. I'm so glad that you took this time to talk with me. So I'm gonna look at your application now. When you work in an area like Buffalo, there's a huge collaborative environment here. And I have this background in sales. You know, I'm a creative person and I wanted to be a part of a company where I could have an impact as it was growing. And I thought, you know, check out what's going on at 43 North. There's so many great companies. And I naturally found this fit with Kickfurther. It was the perfect place for me. Stella, where's your toy? Go get your toy. Having been a procrastinator in life, I'm glad that I didn't procrastinate the decision to move up here. And that was something that I really did on the spur. I didn't know anyone here. I just hopped in the car, came up here, and thought, if I can't find an apartment in two weeks, then I'll just make another plan. And I found an apartment in three days. 
I really love it. It just feels like home. So we just finished deliberation after almost two hours of conversation amongst some 30 judges. And here we are. We're about to call all the finalists and give them the good news. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, how are, how are you? you? Good, good. Sorry we're getting back to you a little bit late. But good news, you're going to Shays. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> for a founder who's been grinding and, you know, probably eating ramen for a while and, and, you know, really, you know, struggling, you have your entire family supporting you. They're bearing that grind as well. You're, you're turning down other jobs, other income. There's all these opportunity costs. And so you, you sacrifice all of that to get to a point where you could bet on this vision and this idea you had. And for those founders to be at that point, to be on that precipice, you know, it really just takes one person to believe in you to make all the difference. And so to finally be at the point where we know who's moving forward and who's going to be on stage tomorrow it feels amazing. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're so excited. We're ready. All right. Uh, Scott, interview, take one. Mark. My name's Scott Wayman, and I'm the founder and CEO at Kangaroo Time. I grew up in a really unique family. I had these two wonderfully altruistic parents. Their mission in life was to provide homes for children that didn't have homes. So they adopted 18 children. And then they had six biological children too. Uh, so I had this wonderful chaotic upbringing with 24 children and two awesome parents that just loved people. I was really passionate about sports in high school. I went to college on a football scholarship, and it was great. In my junior year, uh, all of a sudden, my dad passes away. And then a few years later, my mom becomes sick with ALS. She got to a point to where she couldn't walk. Um, she was on a breathing machine. And at that point, I adopted my youngest brother, Chase. Chase came to live with me when he was about six, and I needed childcare. 
the child care center that I used. They were in love with educating children, building body, souls, and minds in their classrooms, but they had no idea what they were doing in their businesses. And I thought, I can build tools to help automate this business and help these great people. Then came the reality. To build beautiful products requires you to hire engineers, and we needed money. And uh, I'm trying to hustle, right? So above the water, the duck looks okay. Below, it was a disaster. We were bleeding money. And that year, I applied for 43 North. It's 500,000 to a million dollars in winnings. This could save us. This could totally save us. So I apply to this contest, and we get an email back. And it says we didn't even make the semifinals. The investors that we had worked with, I just don't think they believed anymore. So my wife and I were, were continuing to fund it. And we're watching our entire life savings just go away. And we got down to where, at the very end, to make payroll, I had to borrow $100,000 from my father-in-law. I was questioning, I was questioning whether or not I was right. Was I a good enough entrepreneur to do this? But I've always felt like great companies, they only happen because founders don't quit. And I knew that we had a great idea. So we hustled. I was spending from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. just working with engineers, and then 11 p.m. to 2 in the morning just working on things to get ready for customers tomorrow, then 6 a.m. throughout the rest of the day because I knew we had something special. So the following year, I reapplied to the 43 North competition, and we've made the finals. What that meant at the time was you fly to Buffalo, you bring your team, and you pitch in the contest. There was a five-minute semifinal pitch and a two-minute finals pitch. For the semifinals, it's my first big moment on stage. It was, it was terrifying. And then this calm came over me. I had this just crazy confidence. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was, it was like a, maybe it was something like somebody looking down on me, but I just had this great confidence and nailed it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Good job. Thanks. Going into the finals, I rehearsed the two minute pitch 150-ish times. We were ready. I hit the first slide and realized it was my five minute pitch deck. Um, you can see it on my face. I'm just lost. Hey guys, this is the wrong deck. And I hear Jordy Levy yell, just go with it. Ad lib, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we will ad lib. At kangaroo time. There you go. I know if I fail, I'm gonna have to shut down the company most likely. I got people that need me to come through and do this. At Kangaroo Time, we are revolutionizing the early education and childcare business. This is a business. I think the actual pitch was like two minutes and 30 seconds, so I got a little bit of extra time. Uh, but I thought it went it went all right. So they announced the five hundred thousand dollar winners first, and we were the second company they announced. Kangaroo Time. I had three employees, so I called them immediately and I said, we won, you know, we won. And I could hear people yelling in the, in the background. And it meant that we were gonna make it. I think belief is one of the most powerful forces on the planet. 
When people are convicted and really believe in something, there are these crazy outcomes that you just can't explain. I think passion, it's not just a word. It's something that kind of just goes through your veins. It's something that gets you really excited in ways as a human you didn't really think was possible. I've had a front row seat of watching Buffalo over the last 25 years grow and change. Back then, when you mentioned to an investor or someone outside of Buffalo that you're starting a company here, they thought you were crazy. We've proved them all wrong. We've got the talent, we've got the people, we've got the passion to go out and solve big problems. And now the top investors in the world are seeking the next Buffalo entrepreneur. So when I think about the passion required to create a massively successful business, it's not just something you can just talk about. So you need to live passion. And if you surround yourself with the best talented, hardest working, most passionate folks around you, you will win. All right, here's how it's gonna work. Each company will have two minutes to pitch and then four minutes of questions from our judges. You ready to go? Let's meet our first finalist. Shearshare is the first B2B mobile tech that provides space as a service for the second largest industry for freelancers and independent contractors. You type in your city and hit go. You select your day or days of the week you like to work, license specialty, workspace type, and a whole host of amenities, and literally book salon space to work like you book a hotel room. It's that easy. We're Fox, the healthy chicken company. What we're doing is real-time, 24-7 visibility for what the chickens are up to. We put cameras up and down the chicken sheds, and we figure out with AI what they're doing and help improve the lives of these chickens. Fred Zellett is the peloton of music education with thousands of videos to teach you anything from songs, styles, courses. We have optional LED hardware that installs on instruments that sync up live with what the instructor is teaching you on screen. What does Top Seeds do? We make the best crackers and roasted seeds in the world. We are woman-owned and minority-driven. And they're made right here in Buffalo. I tasted it for the first time today. It's frickin' ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that wraps up our pitches. Our judges are gonna go backstage and they're gonna deliberate.
Every year when we come back to Shays, we have more of a story to tell. And I think for this community to have that night, to be reminded of all the things that are going on, no matter if you're in it or not, right, that this thing is working and it's changing lives. This community has so many and so much of the intangibles that just can't be replicated. When we start to recognize those assets, start putting them together in service of something much broader, we have the opportunity to create something that is much bigger than I think that anyone has an appreciation for. You know, Buffalo is on the map. I think that we just have to show everybody where it is. When the finalists come out, when they win, you'll be the first one you're gonna meet them. People think of Buffalo, I think of chicken wings and snow. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a lot more than chicken wings and snow, I promise you. Technology people standing alone by themselves are nothing without the academics, without the small businesses, without the community. Every single person and their perspective, it counts. If you are creative, if you have ideas, you can make an impact. Buffalo is really like one big family. There's a genuineness about this community. It's just the way Buffalo is. It's the city of good neighbors. I, I know that's a tagline, but it is. All you have to do is come here, and if you can't get it, there's something wrong with you because it is a special place. Oh, yeah. We have a winner, guys, so you guys there. can cue the sound. I'm pleased to announce Buffalo's newest million dollar winner of the 43 North Startup Competition. Top seed. Seven years ago, we wanted to create an economic development engine that would change the future of Buffalo. And we didn't know if anybody would believe that we were gonna actually pull this off. But we have created an amazing opportunity for everyone to understand, which is really what matters, that you could start a business in Buffalo, New York. You can grow a business in Buffalo, New York. You can get funded and you can succeed in disrupting a very significant industry. And that's what you gotta understand. You gotta believe that what you're doing is gonna change the world. And if you believe that, you can succeed right here in Buffalo.